welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen. With me today is our own pianist in residence, Sam Page. This is your daily dose of happy. We are so happy you decided to join us today. So I have to ask you, Sam, There, you've, you've heard the new theme music there. You're the pianist in resident. You're the musical expert. How did I do? I thought you, I, I was impressed. I thought you did. All right. Sounds okay, good. good. Well, if I can satisfy you, I know I can satisfy almost anybody else. So that's good. That's <laughs> Eric, Eric uh, Swanson is our guest today. And Eric, Sam is like truly an amazing pianist. Really, he he, he just improvises everything. He doesn't actually, you, you'll probably never see sheet music in front of him. But he can just sit down and just play and have beautiful music come out of his fingertips. So that's why, you know, when you have an expert, you go to the expert, right? So I well, I want to hear. I want to hear him now. Can do you have a I, piano right there? I have one. Let's, Let's go. Let's go. Full screen on you. I want to hear it. I mean, that's <laughs> that's what I that's what I live for. I live for uh, awesome, unique talent of amazingness. So let's do this. Ask and it is given. Let's see. Yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Sam Page. It just wow. flows from his fingertips. It's amazing. That is amazing. Well, where where are you? you're in Columbus, Ohio, yeah. So we yep. uh, we'll need to we we'll need to see about hiring you to come to one of our Habitude Warrior events and Ooh. and uh, and play for everybody. Wow, that's, that's amazing. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. That's amazing. Oh, Thank you, Sam. Of we we love it whenever he's willing to play for it. Sometimes he give us ten seconds. He actually gave us like three or four minutes one time, and it was oh, yeah. it was heavenly. It was beautiful. So, yeah. Anyway, our special guest, Eric Swanson, he, he dubs himself Mr. Awesome. I Honestly, Eric, I'm not sure it's the right title. I think you should be Mr. Energy. Just Mr. From Energy, first, okay, yeah. From, from the first few minutes of meeting you, I mean, put it this way, the Energizer Bunny, for those who know what that is, that's a poor relation to Eric Swanson. No, yeah, he's, he's <laughs> that guy, that guy's so slow. That bunny, I know. He, needs a, he needs to catch up, you know what I mean? Like It really does. I mean, oh my <laughs> goodness. You were, it, it's like you were, you were probably, uh, I, I almost want to say you were born a bundle of energy, but I suspect you kind of grew into a bundle of energy I, as time went on. I'll tell you what, you're actually pretty accurate. When the doctor uh, delivered me, I turned around and slapped the heck out of the doctor. I, was like, oh. <laughs> I did. I was like, let's go. And he's like, wait, I got to cut that. I got to cut it myself. Come on, mom, let's get out of here. That's what happened. <laughs> and by the way, quick, quick, quick correction. I didn't dub myself Mr. Awesome. That was given to me by Brian Tracy and Les Brown as I was coming oh, off the stage. Okay. So when, okay. when Les Brown calls you Mr. Awesome and points yeah. to you when you're coming off the stage, you kind of moniker that, you know? Yeah, you <laughs> don't turn that one down. <laughs> I don't blame you. Yes. Like, yeah. sir, Mr. Brown, whatever you say, sir. Yes. That's right. <laughs> Rock and roll. <laughs> He's great. Share a lot of stages with him. So you got to give us a little bit of background for people who are not totally familiar with Mr. Awesome, Eric Swanson. Tell us a little bit about yourself. All right, sure. I mean, what else is there to know? I, I'm awesome. I mean, that's, that's apparently foremost, right? It's pretty darn amazing. And you know, interesting. I say that because, well, interesting to to your audience, um, <laughs> because a lot of people don't wake up and and, and declare that, like literally declare. It. Like I showed you a, a little name tag. Where did my name tag go? I had it mm -hmm. here. A second. Oh, here it is. I, I literally have a name tag in front of my. I put it on my computer, and it says Eric Swanson, and it's literally Mister Awesome. So I remind myself who I am because I'm going to show up every time as as the great Mister Awesome that I want to be. And most people don't do that. Most people allow uh, and de determine their their future, their day by other people determining it for you. And instead, I take ownership of it. So a little back, background on me, a little bit of background on me. I grew up in uh, Washington, D.C. area oh, and good. in Potomac, Maryland. Um, yeah. uh, it was great. Uh, it was a suburb. It was There was nothing wrong. I would ride my bikes everywhere. Um, <laughs> I'd get home at 5 o'clock if I wanted to. My parents were like, oh, great, you're home, great. And uh, they're amazing, you know. Nobody wore seatbelts, and it was a great you know, people were smoking in airplanes. It was crazy, right? <laughs> I mean, it was like an awesome, you know, a free for all. It was like, woo! -hoo! And then, like, 
I don't know, 87 or something, the internet came out and everyone's like, Hey, let's go on the internet. So, so we did that. And then, and then fast forward, I, I moved to, uh, to Vermont, <laughs> uh, moved to Vermont. Ooh. Um, I had what I call my Satori moment and the Satori okay. moment, Satori, as you guys know, of course, Satori means instant awakening. The, the time that you realize, ah, that's beautiful. The time that you take a lemon and you turn it into lemonade, right? Oh, that's, that's cute. I love that. That was cute. Yeah. Yeah. So I had my instant for, awakening. Listen, I got to tell yeah. listeners because most people are, are audio only. They don't see that. But he, oh, just wow. held up a, he held up a lemon with a little picture of a smiley face on it. It was wonderful. Absolutely <laughs> wonderful. There you go. You got, you got to check out the YouTube. So, so, uh, so yeah. So I, I, I literally made some lemon aid out of my lemons that I was handed, uh, with this beautiful deck of cards, uh, that, that, that God handed me. Um, he handed me this. He, I was taller width wise than height wise. <laughs> Nicely <laughs> said. I was until my, um, you know, end of my sophomore year. Then in, in summertime, it was like, ah, summer camp. And then I, grew one foot taller. So then my junior year, I said, why am I letting these little guys bully me now? This is ridiculous. So I decided to enough is enough. Satori moment, make some lemonade. And I ended up um, creating this uh, quote unquote gang of awesomeness. So we would go around helping people instead of hurting them. It was great. So wow. there's my, my junior year of my, my first gang that I joined. It was my own gang, my gang of awesomeness. And, uh, and we helped everyone. If, if someone was in need, you know, if you gotta give us an example, this is not your typical oh. high school story. So give us like an example. Oh. Oh, I'll give you tons of examples. I mean, if a kid was like, you know, they tripped, they fell, we would help them out, pick them up. We're walking by the smoking section. You know, those guys with the leather jackets and the, and the chain on their, on their, on their, um, a wallet. Why do they have a wallet in school? Anyway, so they, they, they're smoking their cigarettes when they would go like this, ready? They would take it out. My gang of awesome people would walk by, take their cigarette, throw it down and stomp it out and go. <laughs> So, so I'm sure that there's a lot of uh, those smokers that were non-smokers now because of us. Um, we'd go to we'd go to teachers and we'd we'd hold up uh, signs like 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 we'd go to their you know how like you go up to a teacher's uh, room you're not in, supposed to be in that in that class but you look at it and you like put your head at the window and and they're like get out of here you're not in this class we would go like that but we would go like this. You're awesome. And they go, <laughs> and then they do what you do. They laugh. They're like, bye. Right, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Eric, you can do that. Wow. <laughs> so we were a gang of awesomeness. We literally brought awesome to the table everywhere we went. It was a lot of fun. And then we started giving, um, report cards to our teachers. That was Did pretty cool. Really? Oh, wow. at first they hated it. They're like, what is this? And then they realized, <laughs> then they're like, Oh, report card. This is pretty cool. And they're like, they're like, Oh, I get an A in this and a B in this and A in that. That's pretty cool. So have you ever given someone a report card? Just give it to them. Just walk up to them. Like, I never have. No, that's, that's oh my God, you should do this. Just stand there with like a little piece of paper and a clipboard or something and a pen and just look at them. Just be like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And they're like, what are you doing? That, that'll like, freak them out. In line at Starbucks. And you're like, I'm just giving you a report card. Here you go. <laughs> you get all A's, you know? I guarantee you they'll buy you a cappuccino. It's great. I'm like a gang of awesomeness. I'm telling you. So if you'd I like to join my gang, there's there's a... There's a gang sign, by the way. We have a gang sign. You want to see what it is? It's sure. everything's all right. All right. right. That's the gang sign. Two the, yeah. 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 So, so, that is, that, <laughs> so that's, all of this is true, by the way. So I believe it. That, that's, that's what's scary about this. I actually believe this. If, if somebody else had said this, I would say, oh, yeah. Okay, cute. No, yeah. this is all true. Yeah. But, but just because of your energy, your energy makes you believable. Thanks, There's man. Something so, about, well, well, there is something about energy that does that. You know? Yeah, and energy is. It, energy is true. You know what energy is? It's amazing. It's energy. <laughs> yes, it is. It really is. And it, it really affects people because you know what? Everything's energy. Like this microphone I'm on, it's energy. It's, you know, this, 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 this cup of, of non-alcoholic stuff. It's energy. I quit oh, yeah. drinking, by the way. I quit three things in my life years and years ago. Three things. Here they are. Write them down. Ready? I quit drinking alcohol. I quit drinking coffee and I quit negativity. Those are the three things. Some of your audience members are like, Hey, two out of three is not bad for me. All right. So anyway, so, so hey, this that's is all- me. I, two out of three. I mean, I, I, I'm working on the third one. Haven't quite that okay. there yet, but two out of, right. the coffee's gone. The alcohol is guess. gone. 
Two out of oh, three. there you go. The negativity. Come on, you're not negative at all. Come on, Mr. Teeson. I, so, uh, I, so, I'm so, like ninety nine percent positive. Let's put it that way. I can't say I'm a hundred percent. Everything's energy. Everything's energy. It's amazing. You know the secret, Walt, that I have in, in regard to the ninety nine percent positive. That's great. By the way, you're better than I in that. It's I'm about you know ninety ninety ten right now. Okay, ten percent of the time I'll get down. You know, I'll throw, I'll throw the lemons across the room, right? <laughs> and try to make lemonade on the, on the wall, right? But, but the thing is that here's the secret. I don't allow that 10% to show. I don't expand on it. I don't law of attraction it, right? We're in the LOA today show and I don't, I don't allow my, my, my negativity to expand through the horizons. I, I stop That's it. Right. I squash it and I use yeah. what I call the law of eight. So the number eight. Okay. okay. <laughs> Pardon me. And the law of eight, at, what I tell myself is I'm going to take eight seconds. Like I stub my toe. Ah, all right. I got eight seconds to get in good mood and I do it. All right. Ah, okay. Or eight minutes or 80 minutes, you know, an hour and a half, roughly whatever it or takes. eight hours. Maybe it's a whole day. I got to get over that email that I got and that I re 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 read and it's negative, or maybe it's eight days that I really have to figure out something in my Zen moment of, of my future. Right. And it takes me eight days to get out of that, uh, funk in, 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 in regard to my attitude. So it's all about attitude. It's all about energy. That's what I, I coined something called habitude warrior. It's all about your habits and your attitude put together. So there you go. I like that. So, so to answer your question, I'm from Washington, DC. Yes, I can tell, right? <laughs> That's the short answer. And well, there's also there are a number of follow ups I could do on that because you gave me all kinds of stuff to ask about. Uh, I'm going to go to uh, the whole thing about overcoming negativity and, and not you know, hanging around in it for very long because that's basically yeah. what you're talking about. One of the things that we like to talk about, and a lot of people um, who are associated with the show kind of latch onto it, I'm kind of curious if you do, some, do something similar. We do what we call check ins. We, we check in with ourselves throughout the day and just see how we're doing and, you know, make adjustments as needed. I, I imagine you probably do something similar, but tell yeah. us what your approach is. Oh, it's amazing. It's, I'm so happy you asked this. Okay. So I have a, a little um, a wristband here that says, decide to be awesome. It literally says that. Decide <laughs> I love awesome. it. Okay. Now, now there's two reasons for this. One is the positive, looking at it and saying, decide to be awesome. This is awesome. The other reason is, if I have a negative thought, guess what I do? Uh-oh, snap. Ow! <laughs> and like, snap out yourself. of it! Snap, snap out, out of it! Out of this. Do it! That's it. So I snap out of it and I, I create my awesomeness. Look, if you're not going to find your awesomeness, create it. Well, also, it helps when you have a wife who's, who's going to do something similar. Although she did it a little bit more funny than that. Because there was a day back before I started doing the podcast where I got into a really bad space. Really, really bad space. And for an extended period of time. And at one point, she started coming up to me. I, I'd be like, you know, lounging on the couch and just feeling sorry for myself and so forth. And she, okay. she'd climb on top. She'd straddle me, dra- drag me by, grab me by the shirt and say, snap out of it. Same <laughs> phrase, just a different way of doing it. <laughs> and it always made me man. laugh. Yeah. <laughs> always That's made me awesome. laugh. And it did. It snapped me out. So it was good. Yeah, it did exactly the right thing. A friend, so, a friend of mine, uh, a friend of mine named Brian had a very similar experience. He yeah. was, um, very, uh, very mm-hmm. down on his, his, uh, his, his luck. Uh, he, he thought he signed a contract. When he was 20, okay, and now he's 35, 40 years old, and they said, you know what? We noticed that the contract was not actually signed, Ooh. and you don't own part. You don't own this this company, this oh, business, geez. this. Hold on, this brand that oh. you guys all know the name of, by the way, and I'll give it to you really? in a second. And Brian's like, what am I going to do? He went into depression. His wife snapped him out of it and said, look, why don't we team up with them? and rebuild with them and get into the contract somehow again. And, uh, and he became one of their top salespeople for the brand that he created. Wow. And his, and he's a good buddy of mine. His name's Brian Smith. And he started something called Ugg Boots. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, and I think just about anybody who's listening knows that knows the name Ugg Boots. That's really something. Wow. Yeah. That, that, that takes a lot to, to, to basically take a situation like that where, I mean, that, that, that's not your everyday little negative thing to happen. That's, that's like true. a major, major, major life event. Like, yeah. like, like a large chunk of your life seem, seemingly taken away from you and you actually find a way to turn that into lemonade. That's really something. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And he's a dear friend, great guy, lives up the street from me here on, on, uh, well, I'm on the island. He's up in the San Diego area and, uh, he's a great guy. So I'll introduce you sometime. Sounds great. Excellent. So, all right. So you, you started out. Hey, in high I'm, I'm, I'm sharing your, your law of attraction, uh, today show on all the different formats. Uh, if you're listening right now, this is the commercial break. Ladies and gentlemen, please share the, <laughs> uh, Facebook and the YouTube and okay. Back to Sam and Walt. There Woo! we go. <laughs> this is great. We ought to hire him. What do you think, Sam? I think, you know, he, I, he's like a good addition. Yeah. As a, <laughs> I, I work for free and jelly beans. And Ooh. jelly beans. All right. Well, I yep. think they are guys are funny. Well, okay. That's competition. I get it. All right. I'll so, pay you $100 if I can work with you. <laughs> okay. Ooh, you don't got... get that offer every day. That's an interesting. Oh, offer. it's great. When you ever want a job, you just take a crisp $100 bill and go, here, it's yours if you take my interview. <laughs> and you're like, okay. I love it. That is great. So, all right. I, I mean, I could tell the best thing about talking with you is the stories. So let's get the right best down to thing? the stories. The best thing. My well, hugs I, are better, but whatever. Well, yeah, but that's kind of hard to do virtually. You know, it's, so like, like a story is kind of like a virtual hug, really. Yeah, that's true. So, so let's do some virtual hugs, right? Okay. Yeah. So, all right. We got the story about how you, you basically started a very unusual upside down gang in high school. That's kind yeah. of cool. You got the out of high school. Gang. Then, then what yeah. happened? It's the positive gang. Yeah, it's great. Have you ever, hey, have you ever done a positive trash talk? No. Can't oh, it's out. great. It sounds like you guys know what trash talk is. Like, Walt, sure. you're such a whatever, whatever. Here's the positive trash talk. You go, Walt, ah, I hate this. Every time I see you, you're always positive. <laughs> Criticize Sam, somebody for being positive. Oh my That's God, Sam. Ah, I got to tell you, man, Sam, you are awesome. <laughs> That piano. <laughs> and your energy smack talk. so great, I can't stand it. Oh, my God. I know. You got to pass it <laughs> off. Go up to someone and be like, ah, every time I see you, every time, you're so smiley. <laughs> I think Sam's already an acolyte. You've won him over. Positive talk, uh, trash talk. <laughs> I'm telling you. Okay. So positive trash talk. So, uh, so I, I want to get back to the story. You got out of high school. Oh, what happened? Yeah. Where'd you go next? Well, they asked me to leave high school. And I said, okay, can I get my transcripts? They're like, whatever. I couldn't even spell GED. <laughs> so finally I get out and, uh, and my dad's like, are you going to finish? I'm like, eh, we'll see what happens. So I finished whatever. Uh, I went to, um, my graduation, which technically I didn't. I went to this bonfire and hung out with my friends. And then, uh, this is in Vermont. It was awesome. And then, um, and then, and then what happened was I went to college and, uh, and, and I went to lunch at college. It was great. I had a great lunch. And then, um, and then I decided to go to college and, and they're like, look, you're not doing very well here. I'm like, all right. Uh, so they asked me to leave. I'm like, this is just like high school. So, so I left college and, um, and then I decided maybe I, maybe I'm better than all of them, you know, <laughs> so who needs that? Right. And then of course people are getting fired left and right. And all the CEOs that went to college were all cheating people out of whatever. I'm like, that's not me. I'm going to build something. So then what I did was I built me, the brand me, um, Mr. Awesome. And I went to, um, I went to Texas and uh, a friend of mine, engineer. Um, I don't know why I just said that, but he's an engineer. Anyway, so he's a, uh, he's a, he's a really interesting thinker as an engineer. And he says, come to Texas. It'll be great. I'm like, okay, Hoss, let's do it. Yeehaw. <laughs> so I cruise over to Austin, Texas, thinking I'm going to ride a bull or, or, mm. or coach a coach a horse or something and uh turns out that um i don't know there's a a horse coaches i don't know what happened so i went over there and i brought my horseshoe which is really heavy to carry to be honest with you so i had these horseshoes in my pocket and i was like what am i doing here and they go dude this is a really nice town come on let's go to restaurant let's go to dinner so i loved austin it was amazing i was waiting tables at a place called mezza luna and um uh, and, and then this guy comes in with his, his managers and so forth. And they offer me a position. They offer me a job. And that job was to work with Brian Tracy himself, um, to, uh, to become wow. a, a senior trainer with Brian. I became a senior trainer with him for, uh, about eight years. And then I branched off, started, uh, a lot of our other companies, universal, uh, seminars, as well as Habitude Warrior. I'm p- pointing up here because there's one of the name tags right there. Habitude Warrior. And, um, there you go. And, and it was great. So we developed all these different uh, sources of, of resources for individuals looking to up-level their, 
um, their life, their attitude, their awesomeness, and more, most really importantly, their, uh, their, their income, right? So we ended up making lots and lots of money for a lot of people. And, and then I was like, you know what? I think we're going to start charging for this. So then we started charging for it. <laughs> so, so then I was, that was pretty cool. And then I became friends with all these different from Dennis, Wait, Dr. Dennis Waitley, um, excuse me, uh, 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 the, uh, performance coach for NASA, um, to, uh, you know, Napoleon Hill's right hand is uh, the president of Napoleon Hill, Don Green, to uh, Sharon Lecter. She and I just co-wrote a book. Uh, it's back here somewhere. Uh, she wrote uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad with Robert Kiyosaki, and she's written uh, many books with, with us. Oh, here's one of hers. Let me just show, share this with you because it's a nice one. It's called Exit Rich. This Ooh, is one great. of Sharon's books. Exit Rich is great. She's written this one right here, which is called, um, oops, that's not the one, Uh Think and Grow Rich for Women. Oh, I'm dropping all those books. Excuse me. There you go. Think and Grow Rich for Women. And I'm, she's. I'm, I'm curious, just quickly, because uh, we don't want to go into that in too much detail. But how is that very from uh, what Napoleon Hill wrote? Oh yeah, it's a easy answer. Um, Napoleon Hill followed 300 super successful individuals back in the day. Right. And guess who those were? Men centric. All of them were men, uh, right? Uh, like, from Teddy it. Roosevelt to, uh, you know, you name it, uh, Andrew Carnegie to all the different amazing uh, men in the, in the, in the, uh, the world back then. Um, and then, you know, we had that, that, that sw- uh, change, that, that, that shift, right? So what she did was she interviewed 300 super successful individual females in Very this book. Good. Yeah. Very cool stuff. Yeah. Love Dear that. friend of mine. She's a great friend. So yeah, so I, 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 and now where I'm at is, uh, we are teaching people how to harness their, their attitudes and their, their habits, um, for the better. And, uh, that's what we do. Habitude warrior. It's all about, you know, being awesome and being, being awesome in your way. It doesn't have to be energized like I am right now. Um, but it just in your way, you know, whether it's playing the piano for, for someone who, who's, who, who needs it, right? Who, you know, you don't go and, and get hired, you you hire yourself to help that person. And mm-hmm. then the money comes in, right? So it's mm-hmm. a really cool, cool system. So basically a way of being of service to people. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I love, I love service, uh, um, individuals that are, you know, in, in, uh, first responders and, uh, and military love them. And what I did was in, in honor of them, I went ahead and did a, a dog tag that I actually wear. I have one on at all times. I'm wearing one and my father is wearing one right now as well. Um, and, and what I do is I put NDSO right there, which stands for no drama, serve others. No Ooh. drama, serve others. So like that's that. my, that's my tagline. I, I, I keep it uh, out there at, at all times. I keep it next to my heart at all times. And it's all about no drama, serve others. So if you're looking to be better at anything, I put it in the chat. You can put it on the, on the screen if you'd like. If you're looking to be better at anything, then, then help people be better at what they want to be better at. And you're going to be rewarded in a major way. That's a beautiful thing. That's a very beautiful Thanks. thing. Now, um, I imagine that over time you have gotten used to working with a lot of people under a lot of different circumstances. Obviously, you, you do your, your seminars and you write the books and so forth, but you probably have also worked individually with people. And I'm sure you've discovered what we all discover. People are people. They don't actually always behave the way you expect them to. So when you're trying to help somebody and they're kind of struggling along, give us some tips. Give us some ideas about, you know, how do you help people who are just, they, they're, they're not getting to where they want to be yet, but they're willing to do something. Mm. So, <laughs> pardon me. So interesting you say that. First of all, I don't like people. So, um, so let's just be clear. Wow. I don't okay. like, I, I don't I, like, I'm yeah, I mean, I, that's a yeah, I don't like mind. people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I make a joke about it all the time. I'm like, yeah, I really don't like people. And they're like, so you got into motivational uh, speaking? I'm like, yeah, cause I don't like people. So <laughs> wait, wait, why? So there's some logic so somewhere in there, it, but I don't know where it is. Yeah. But okay. So, cool. so if you think about it, I got into motivational speaking because I didn't like what was happening. With people, wow. I wanted to change the world by changing all of us together, and and that's what I started to to do, and and it's it's just been amazing. So here's my suggestion to all of you. I have another wristband that says um, that says a uh, a bet on yourself, and and what I would suggest is bet on yourself, right? If you're in a slump, look, my buddy Les Brown used to tell us what's what's a what's a slump or or a rut. 
a rut is only six feet from a grave is what he used to say. So oh, you just yeah. got to snap out of it, right? I mean, who better ask yourself this question? In fact, someone should write this in whatever chats you're in and, and write down who better to deal with a situation like this than me. And the answer is mm. nobody. You got it. You're it. You know, we develop these, uh, these masterminds. Our masterminds are amazing. Uh, there's a wait list to get into our masterminds now. And, and we teach people in our Zoom masterminds how to take harness of yourself and, and find the brilliance and the gift in you because we're all unique. And, and, and it's up to us to make that decision. Like, and have reminders everywhere. Like I have reminders all over my, 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 uh, my desk right here in front of me. And I travel a lot, so I have multiple desks, but I have reminders, you know, this one right here. It's literally right in front of me, right next to the, the computer. And it just says, you are awesome. And this is a, this is a message to me from me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here's another, here's another, uh, uh, good point. Let me see if I can grab one of my books. I think it is right here. Here. This is my, one of my latest books that I just came out with. It's called, the principles of David and Goliath. Ooh. And I co-wrote this one with a bunch of cool people like Brian Tracy and, and Alex Stern and, and Cynthia, um, uh, uh, excuse me, Cynthia Kersey, Rob Angel. Rob Angel started, uh, something called Pictionary. He invented picture. So really okay. cool friends of mine, right? So, so the, the bottom line, this book right here, um, this is my very first copy. This one right here. Very first. Oh, I slept with it four times already. I love you. <laughs> so, so this is my very first copy of my book. And, and if you look inside, it's signed to me. Okay. And, and, and check this out. Who signed it? Check this out. It says, Eric, congratulations for such an amazing accomplishment in bringing this story of David and Goliath back to life in a modern day light for all of our success. Thank you. You are awesome. Me. Signed ah. me. Okay. So I, I love wrote that. That's down great. to myself and I, and I keep it here as, as kind of like a, a, an award, a reward to yeah. say to myself, look, who better to deal with this than me? All right. It's up to me. If it's meant to be, it's up to who? You. It's up to me. I love that. That's fabulous because there are, I mean, that's one of the things that I think most people can stand to spend a little more time doing, giving themselves praise. And it's a hard thing to do if you haven't been doing it before, but once you're used to it, it gets it pretty easy. But yeah. It's still it, just takes, it takes that muscle to, to start yeah. doing it. You know, exactly. write down, like literally grab a piece of paper and a pen and write down 10 things while you're awesome. Write it down I, today. Right. I, I, and then change the first, it tomorrow. You know, I remember the first time I tried to do uh, what they call the mirror work, you know, talking to yourself in the mirror. And, and my first session went something like this. I love you. Oh, God, I can't do this. That was my entire first session. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you know, that's where we start from, right? I, I got I got up one, one morning. Uh, I, so this is embarrassing. But in Houston, Texas, I had a, a couple of houses there. One, one of my homes, I woke up in the morning. I got up. I walked over to this mirror. I had a, a mirror that was a, a floor-to-ceiling mirror, like one of those, like, like art deco ones that went like this. Right. And it was really cool. So I look at this full frame mirror and I look at it and I look at myself and then I looked behind me at myself and I looked back at myself and I was a little not in shape. And I was like, I was like, I said out loud, I go, this has got to go. So ah. I got rid of the mirror. I the mirror. Like, <laughs> it was the mirror's fault. <laughs> the mirror had to go. <laughs> so then I realized maybe it's not the mirror's fault. Maybe it's, my awesomeness that I need to get in touch with. And that's what I did. Now I've got something called the 60 second morning mirror and, Ooh. and and it's a strategy and here it is for your audience Details. members. Yeah. So 60 second morning mirror is going up to the mirror of success, brushing your teeth for 60 seconds or, or roughly and having a conversation with yourself in the mirror and nice. saying, it's very similar to the mirror work that you're talking about. And it sounds like this. It sounds like I am the best. I am focused. I will succeed. I believe in myself. I set high expectations. I don't let others bring me down. I will mm. learn and grow every day. And what I do is I take that, that saying after I talk to myself in the mirror, eyeball to eyeball, and then I, I smile and I high five the mirror. Have you, you really? ever high wow. Have you ever high fived a mirror before? Never, never you, tried that. No. You never fail. Try it out. Try it out. You can never <laughs> fail. It's awesome. Well, that's true. I mean, unless you have really bad aim, but yes, I mean, even if you have bad aim, you'll hit something. So yes, yeah. Well, You're that's what Brian used to tell us too. Brian Tracy used to tell us, "Shoot for the moon. If you only hit the stars, hey, at least you hit something." You hit something. Right? <laughs> Very good. I love that. 
Okay, so we're getting a good handle here on who Mr. Awesome really is and why he is so awesome. And I'll, I'll tell you honestly, when I when I first saw your promo material, I said, okay, this guy's got a lot to live up to. You've done that in spades. You're doing great. So, yep, all that is now aside. And and by the way, we also got past that little thing that you were uh, talking about on your, your dog tag. You know, the judgment thing, the drama part, we got past that part. So that was a good thing, too. So th this is good stuff. I'm liking it. Now, I want to take it to like what I consider to be the next step, the next level. Because for me, the next level is what do you do with it? How do you take this stuff and go out into the world and do what it is that you do? How do you take it and do it? Well, How, do do I mean, it? How do you get going? That answer, How do you go? <laughs> that answer is like a four-day seminar of mine. But I'll give you the 10-second um, you know, the, the, the version. Is, we'll take the cliff yes. notes. That's good. Yeah. So get started. I mean, that's, that's the first uh, thing. A lot of people don't actually take the first step. You know, you got to get in, in line. Look, if you're going to go to a buffet in, in Vegas or Reno or, or a wedding and, and you want to get to the shrimp and the, and the, and the lobster and the, and the roast beef way at the, at the, at the end of the line, at the beginning of the line, excuse me, what do you do? You get in line. You have to get in line. And then second thing is you have to stay in line. This is what Brian Tracy taught me. Get in line, pay full price. And get and stay in line and don't get out of line. Don't quit. Don't quit the line. And then you'll get to the shrimp and the, and the, and the, um, you know, the lobster and the roast beef and, and at the front of the line. That's what you want to do. That's really good. I like that because I think it's probably the one thing that stops people more than anything else. It, I know it has stopped me in the past and it's one of the things I've been working on myself for a long time. That is persist. Keep going at it. You like you, you know the thing that you're you're going after is what you want to go after. Why are you stopping? Go, for yeah. goodness' sake! Just I get agree. Going, you know, I agree. You know, it, so. look, it, it's it's called done is better than perfect. Yes. Boy, that one took me a long time. Mm -hmm. Done better than perfect. Perfect. Oh God, I was shooting for perfection for so long and missing it every time. Talk about missing the stars. I mean, I wasn't even in the same universe. <laughs> it was just <laughs> really awful. But every time that I aimed at, at perfection, all I ended up doing was, was shooting myself in the foot. That was the most incredible part about the whole thing. I had to actually just stop doing that before I finally said, geez, I feel so much better. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like you have a lot of stars around you right there, though. So you could just reach right behind you. I can. Yeah. Well, I, I, I actually have that background for one reason. So that every time I'm doing a podcast and recording, I can look at that and remind myself that the universe has my back. Aww. That's true. That's Very I'm nice. For. Yeah, that's why I like that. Love Plus, it. I just like having it as a background. But that's I used to, I used to have a lot of hundred dollar bills behind me. But nice. <laughs> no, I like that too. That's great. I, I love the way that you just you very creatively just find any way you can to be putting imagery in front of yourself to say, I want to remind you who you really are. Yeah. I want to remind you why you're so good. I want to remind you why it is that your life is so worthwhile. Why, why so, it is that what you're doing is so worthwhile. <laughs> Interesting you asked this, and I can't show it to you because you're on top of it right now. So I'm literally a 13-time number one best-selling author. And literally, the computer system and the uh, videography and the, and the um, tripod is on top of all 12 and the 13th is right there. All 13 books are literally right underneath you right here in wow. front of you, in front of me, not in front of you. So it's just constant reminders, guys. That's yeah. what it is. I, I worked with a, a, a young lady. Her name is Marie Diamond. She's a, a fantastic. I love Marie Diamond. Yeah. Oh, great. You know, Marie. So she just. I don't probably, know her personally, but I love her work. I'm just, you know, just from what okay. I've seen of her, she's, she's terrific. Well, well, let's, let's call her right now. If you want to, we can get her on the phone. Um, she's a dear friend of mine. She's, she, uh, she co-wrote, uh, 13 steps to riches with me. Eric Swanson, Marie Diamond, boom, boom. boom. Nice. And, uh, and she's amazing on organized planning. And mm -hmm. there's a photo of her somewhere back here. Oh, right over there that way. Thank so you. long story short, um, long story short, she and I were on a conversation, uh, at one point where she was, she told me about her, her app. She has got an amazing app. And, and the app, if you just look up Marie Diamond, you'll find it. And it, it shows you different ways to feng shui your, your success. Okay. Feng shui your house and, and, and in your home and where you, where you are. And so all of these things are here for a reason. And the things in front of me are there for a reason. And a lot of us don't, we take that for, for granted. We take our, our awards for granted. I mean, I have mm -hmm. awards literally right here that I can see, you know, this one says, Mr. Awesome Eric Swanson right there, you know, so it's literally reminders 
um, that we have to convince ourselves before we convince somebody else. I mean, if you can't convince yourself, how are you going to convince the world that you are the person to, to be interviewed by or, or the classic pianist to, 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 sh to run that show, right? So we need to convince ourselves before we go out there and convince other people. You know, I have another thing right here. I went to, sorry to interrupt you real quick. I have another no, thing that's no a dealer. It says dealer. It's just a little, you know, I sometimes play poker with some friends and this one says dealer because I am the dealer. I'm the creator. I'm the dealer. I'm dealing all this really cool stuff. All right. So go ahead. What were you going to say? I was just going to say, I love that. So don't mind the interruptions at all. That's fabulous. Uh, but I, I'm particularly focused on what you just said, that that you have to be the person who appreciates yourself before you, anybody else can appreciate you. And that's my way of saying what you just said. And yeah. I think it's it's probably the thing we we kind of stumble on more than anything else. I think the lack of self-confidence is probably the number one cause for people not getting what they want in their lives. And it, it, it's a big deal. It's a really, really big deal. You talk to enough people, you find out how big of a deal it is. So I I, I'm liking that you, that you push that so much. If, when, when you, I mean, I know that you give lots of talks to large audiences and so forth, but I keep thinking about those times when you're, when you're doing one-on-one -on -one or, you know, small group conversations, your mastermind, um, as an example. When, when you're talking to an individual and you, and you get a sense of who that individual is, and, and you're, you're, you're sensing that they're really, they, they could do a lot more to feel good about themselves. What are some of the ideas that you give them to help get them going? Cause that, that getting going is always the hardest part with something like this. Well, it's, I mean, you'd, you'd have to come to my mastermind to find out, <laughs> first, first of all. Um, but I'll give you a simple way to do it. Uh, find other people that have done it before. And put yourself ah. in those shoes. So I'll give you an example. Roger Bannister in 1950s, uh, 52, I think it was, he's the first person to run a four minute mile. And then within six, within six months afterwards, 16 other people did it. So yeah. Nike yeah. didn't come out with a brand new insole or anything. It was the attitude. It was the mindset that made a big difference. Here's another thing. Uh, another friend of mine, if there's no Les Brown, he, he used to t tell us this. He'd say, Hey, you know, how full is the glass or how empty? What's the deal? And you know how some people say, oh, you have to have it, you know, is it half full or half empty? And, and, and Les says, it's neither. He says, it has to be full for you and overflowing for other people. You have to give it to yourself first before you give it to other people. How do you assume, you know, Jim Rohn personally told me this, and he's put it in many tapes as well, and, and, and tapes, Sam doesn't know what a tape is, audios. Um, <laughs> so, so what happened... What happened was, uh, Jim Rohn would tell us, uh, you know, in an airplane, you put on, if, if the oxygen is needed, you put on your mask first, then you help other people around you, including children. So it's up to you first. If it's meant to be, it's up to me. It, and that Brian, really, Brian is, that's a commitment. That, that, yeah. that's like, that's an ongoing commitment that, you, that I think we all have to kind of make in our own lives. I mean, it's pretty clear you have. You've made it like a, a second by second commitment. Thanks, man. Truly yeah. awesome. That's why you're Mr. Awesome. But Thank you. Something we all need to work on. That's something that everybody. Well, I and it's easy to work on. Need. It's easy to work on. It's it, look. It's it's just making a decision. That's why I have the website. Decide to be awesome. It's a decision. It's not a. It's not a. You will be awesome. It's not a. You will be awesome when this happens. It's decide to be awesome first. You know, Wayne Dyer used to tell us that. Right. You'll see it when you believe it. Not you'll believe mm -hmm. it when you see it. Right. So really important. You know, it's it's all the mindset, the the attitude, the brain. You know, and, and you can do this in an instant. It's that Satori moment to change your lemonade, lemons into lemonades or margaritas. Something, else, something you've referred to a couple of times is your mastermind. And it does trigger a question in my mind um, because I think different people, I know for myself, I was very confused for the longest time about what a mastermind was. Over mm -hmm. time, I have kind of developed my own image of it. But I've also found just from talking to various people, um, including many guests here on the show, different people have a different idea about what a mastermind is and what makes a mastermind effective. So give us your take on that. What is it about, what, what, what is a mastermind in your view? And what is it about a mastermind that makes it so, work so well? Sure. Well, depending on whose mastermind it is, it works so well. <laughs> All right. Um, there, there's, you know, it depends on who, who it is and where you're going. But uh, I, I won't give you my definition. I'll give you the definition of a mastermind. The okay. true definition of a mastermind is um, a collective of two, I'm sorry, three or more people, because 
one and one does not equal two. It equals 11, actually. So you bring three or more individuals in different types of industries to be a collective group <clears throat> to put into a topic of discussion for literally a 90 minute session, whether it's in person or, or virtual and 90 minute session where you put one of the five, 10, 15, 20 people in mastermind. There's typically they, they're, they're, they limit to about 12 or 13 people, um, in a closed group. And what happens is you put the one person in what's called an opportunity chair. Um, and it's their time to bring up a topic of discussion that they would like to work on that they're, they're striving, not trying, they're striving to get the answer to or counsel, not advice. So they're looking for counsel from the individuals around the circle, around the mastermind where the, their support system and they're looking for the, for the counsel for them based on experience. So I'll give you an example. It's, it's not uh, something where, you know, you say, Oh, I want to be more successful and more productive during the day. I need time management help. And then somebody says, uh, raise their hand and says, well, I've got some counsel. I heard that this could be good and useful. We don't want that. What we want is um, raise your hand and say, here's what I've experienced. Mm -hmm. I will give you my experience on what made me successful or what to stay away from that will make you more successful, right? So it's all based on experience. We're not looking for advice or opinion. We're looking for counsel. And that's what a true mastermind tr truly is. Um, so it gives the, the um, every member has a, a, a an opportunity, a chance or an opportunity to get into the opportunity chair to be in what's called the hot seat. And and then you have, uh, literally we have, um, we, I've condensed them down to these. We, we have different paddles for, you know, uh, go. And then we've got, you know, stop. <laughs> it's pretty easy. <laughs> stop. But, but, but stop doesn't mean stop right away. It means this is like a red light. You know what a red light does? You're, you're five steps into the, into the crossing the street and this happens. What do you do? Continue crossing the street. Finish your quick sentence. Don't get hit by a car and stop right there. Most people just quit. Don't do that. Right. Then you've got a uh, blue train is what we call this. So you're kind of going off of, off the topic, right? You're, you're bringing in different things that really don't make a difference in this particular topic. And that's really important because of what's called borrowed benefits. And then you've got the yellow sign, which is typically lucky. We have one more minute to, to finish up this discussion, but the, um, the borrowed benefits is critical. Borrowed benefits is simply, um, if, if I bring up a, uh, a question at hand and Sam's in the audience and Sam's like, you know what? Interesting. I don't do that particular thing, but this could help me in this business. So that's borrowed benefits, right? And I, I, I love it. So for me, my mastermind is a true mastermind, but then we, we, uh, we kind of, um, um, how do I say it? We not alter it. How do I say it? We cushion it with energy and awesomeness. Okay. That's how I. Well, you also yeah. distinguish between counsel and advice. And I, I'd like you to go into that in, in a little more detail because I, I think that's a, sure. a, a difference that may not be as clear to some people as it could be. Yeah, sure. A buddy of mine, his name's Greg Reed. He writes a lot of books with us as well. Great guy. And I speak on his stage all the time called Secret, uh, Secret Knock. And, uh, and he says this, he goes, you know, if, if I'm going to write a book, like, let's say, are you guys authors? I have written. Yes. Okay. So let's say you're number one bestselling author. Um, or let's say you're not. Let's say Sam's like, I'm you not. Know what? okay. Well, let's say you want to be and, and you say, I want to be an author. I want to be a best selling author. Well, first of all, uh, Walt, you should call us right after this interview and get into <laughs> our next book series, which is based on, Oh my gosh, Dale Carnegie's work, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's called the Book of Influence. It's a four book program and I'll give you a discount pay to play to come into it if you want. But here's what happens. Some people say, I want to write a book. I want to be a bestseller. And then you know who they go to? They go to their aunt, their mom, their, their, their hairdresser. They go to their dog walker and they tell them that. And then the dog walker says, really? You? You're going to write a book? Good luck. I got to pick up that poop. All right. And then what happens? A dog walker, right? So then, <laughs> or you go, or you know what you do? Uh, well, you go to your best friend. You're like, yeah, I think I'm, uh, I'm going to write a book. I'm going to be a bestseller. And they go, all right. Well, yeah, I heard this is good or that's good or whatever. And they don't know because they're not basing it off of, off of structure and off of experience. They're basing it off of opinion of what they think would be good. So what I suggest and what, what Greg Reed always says is look for him when he wanted to be a bestselling author, what he did was he went to Jack Canfield. And he said, Hey, Jack, 
right? And Jack's a good buddy of ours, Chicken Soup of the Soul, if you don't know who he is. He's, he co-wrote that with um, uh, our other buddy, Mark Victor Hansen. So you go to Jack, and, and he went to Jack, and he said, hey, I want to be-, be a bestseller. What do I do? And Jack says, sit down, son. <laughs> he says, <laughs> sit down, Greg. And he told Greg, he says, sit down, grab a piece of paper. He goes, great. You're going to tell me what to do? He goes, no. I'm going to give you 15 things what not to do. Here they are. Mm-hmm. And he wrote them down and he says, oh, this is brilliant. This is golden. Because most people give advice and he's like, look, you're going to get all this stuff uh, advice, but this is what we did and what we didn't do to build a dynasty like Chicken Soup for the Soul. All right. And that's, that's what we do as well in our, in our uh, masterminds. We, we stop people. We give them that literally the red card, which is right here. Boom. And we say, hold on. Wait. This is, is this based off experience? Or is it based off of your opinion of what things should should happen and should do? And they're like, you're right. Good point. And then we go, who has experience? Raise your hand. Boom. Let's go to that person. Let's go to this person. All right. And everyone knows that that's the, the format, the structure. So you, when you have your uh, masterminds, obviously, you're drawing from some pretty talented uh, pool of people. Most of us don't really have that option. I don't know most of these people is what's going to be the, the typical answer is. It certainly was true for me. So let's say you're some you're just an average person like me who wants to do something to build himself up, to improve himself using a mastermind. Can you just do it with ordinary people? Join a mastermind. That's what I would suggest to the people asking that question that you just asked. Because otherwise you're looking at, that's like going to the grocery store and you're like, I think, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to bake a cake. And, uh, and then you're like, I'm just going to, I'm not going to look it up. I'm not going to look up a mastermind of how to bake a cake. I'm just going to go to the grocery store and you walk up and down the aisles. and You're like, I think there's yeast in something. Okay. I'll get yeast. <laughs> And then, and then you're like, mm, sprinkles. That sounds good. Uh, and he's icing. And then you get all these different things. You're like, uh, you forgot the main ingredient, eggs. I'm like, oh, crap. I got to go back. And then you go to another store. This is another thing. You go to a different store or a different mastermind instead of staying with the right one. Right. So what I suggest is join a mastermind. Join a mastermind and learn. Now, can you learn it on you, your own? Of course, but you're going to go faster and farther with a team. It literally says teamwork right here next to me here. So go with a team and you'll go a lot faster and a so lot now, farther. So now the next question is, how do you find a mastermind? Um, you go to ridealongguestpass.com and join my mastermind right there. <laughs> ah, now there well, I've awesome seen that one up. I know I did, but still, you know. <laughs> It was it was just sitting there. It was waiting to be teed up, so I teed it up for you. That's right. So I put in a free gift for your your listeners. Um, honestly, if you want to check out a mastermind, you can do one session for free with us. Tell us that Walt and Sam sent you. Really, tell them the pianist Sam sent you. Okay, yeah, that'll okay. do it. So <laughs> tell them the universe and Walt sent you, and uh, and go ahead and 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 go to ridealongguestpass dot com. If you want to put it on the screen, you're welcome to, and it's in the chat. And that's that's it. Go there, and you'll get a free session, one free session to check it out. If you like it and it resonates with you, and you resonate with us, then we'll, we talk about having you join. If we all vote you in, it's pretty cool. And that's one way to join a mastermind. Otherwise, Google where are masterminds, you know, and there are a lot of them on 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 zoom now and different places pick one that you absolutely love you know and settle in it's like trying on a jacket trying on a coat you know try it on see if it's comfortable find out if those shoes are comfortable to walk in and uh, and if you resonate with those people then keep keep going i in our our masterminds we have a lot of people who who get emotional you know it's because we go to deep in the core of what's really their struggle because they don't know they think, well, <clears throat> it's this. And we're like, no, it's actually not. This is the issue. And they're like, you're right. Because they realize it. We break it down. We have a system of asking these what's called clarifying questions and then giving the counsel. So once we, we identify what the issue is, that gets to put it, put into the hot seat. It's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. And we will, by the way, put into the show notes both the link for right along guestpass.com and for decide to be awesome.com so that listeners can find their way easily to both one of those. Um, but you raised a really good point. And I want to zero in on just a little bit more before we finish up for the day here. Um, sure. The idea of, of basically testing, trying out, finding out whether or not you fit with a mastermind. I, that, that's, I know for myself, if I had first been exposed to that idea, my first idea would have been to run the other direction. Like, oh, God, I can't do that. That's, that, that's too terrifying. But it's vital, isn't it? 
is absolutely vital to know just to find out yeah. if it's somebody you can actually feel good working with. Right. And it's not the one person, it's the team. Well, the, the group. group. Yeah, exactly. It's, right. That's the, that's the key. Um, and if, and that's why I, I love my personality. What, what I do, I always show up this way, always. And I give great information, great knowledge based on experience, but I also throw in the awesome attitude as well. So people uplift when they're in my room. And, and, uh, and I love that. And that's the type of person I want in the room to learn and grow and utilize that. So we have all different types of walks of life in our, in our masterminds from multi, multi, multi millionaire, one billionaire actually, and one, uh, and a few millionaires that are, um, CEOs of huge corporations. But we also have the mom and pop, the mom that's struggling and, and has three kids and wants to learn and grow and surround themselves with all these individuals. And we're all equal in the mastermind. When we show up, you have to be there you have to be on time you have to participate you have to keep your video on it's it's awesome and and it's it's a chance for you to surround yourself with you know the best flock of eagles right so join our gang join our positive positivity gang and and be more successful this is really important stuff and i'm I'm thinking back everything that you're talking about here i'm thinking back to myself from 10 20 years ago especially and and some of the things that would have stopped me from doing something like this in, in the case of a mastermind, the first thing that comes to my mind is, well, I'm an introvert. I've always been an introvert. And the idea of, of joining a group and, oh, my God, I got to put my ego on the line. And then people are going to say all these things to help me. And I'm going to feel so embarrassed. And you know, I mean, I could have been the champion at talking myself out of something like this. So yeah. let, let's let's assume we have some some introverts listening in who are a little bit reluctant to do something like this. How, how does an introvert talk himself into doing something like this? Yeah, it's a great question. In fact, um, I'll share something with you. You're probably not going to believe I, too, am, am, am an introvert as well. Um, you're you're going to have to prove that one. I, I'm not sure I believe that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I I really am. I truly am. I I don't, you know, I don't really, I hang out with myself a lot and my dogs. My dogs are my best friend. And I okay. really don't really like people that much. Um, but <laughs> so I just well, don't surround that. That's true. Yeah. It's true. I just like, look, I'll go to dinner and hang out and I'll sit at the bar. I don't drink, but I have my dinner. And, you know, if one person's there, two people, great. If I'm in a group of 15, 20 people, that's fine. Um, I'll, I'll be, I'll, I'll come out of my shell and, and it's okay. Um, because I remind myself that everyone else is coming out of their shell as well. And, and that's the key is, is when you're, when you're in these groups, you are, everyone else is just as scared as you are because they don't know what's going on. They, they truly are. And, and what I've learned is I throw some, some, some curveballs in our masterminds where I'm like, all right, everybody up. And everyone's like, we're on a zoom. And I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> everyone up. I want to see, I want to see from here to here. And they stand up and they're like, all right, this is weird. And I, I literally, <laughs> and I go, everyone turn around. They're like, that's my butt. And anyway, <laughs> I go, all right, everyone sit back down. So, so like weird things like this, like I, I make everyone equal, everyone even. So if you're looking at the backside of somebody's shorts, you don't know if that's Brian, Susie, Sally, or this person, that person. nobody knows. And, and it's like, you, you are equal. You're even from everyone in the, in the mastermind. And so the first thing is don't worry about it. Everyone else is scared too. And, and, um, and, and what you should do is just be the true you and uh, the true you, something like this, a magic, uh, magic, situation happens or magic happens where you will realize that this is truly a home for you. And, and at least for mine, my mastermind members always say that they're like, Oh my gosh, I got to tell you this, this is a, this is a home. We, we feel like, and, and they feel this is one of the best compliments I've ever gotten many times. And it is, Oh my gosh, I've missed you for the last four days. I, we have to have more masterminds every week. You know, we have like once a week basically, or twice a week sometimes. And, uh, and it's like, we have different groups and so forth. So, People say, I missed you. I needed you because of the support. They don't realize it's through, it's through a subconscious support system that's helping in this conscious land of Zoom that we're in. It's Which amazing. Is, that's really the second piece of what I consider to be the two most important pieces for anybody wanting to accomplish anything in their lives. The first one we talked about earlier, the self-confidence piece mm-hmm. and how important it is to build that up. The second one is what you just identified. I would call that the socially connected piece. How can, how much, what kinds of connections do you have with people? How deep are the connections and how are you interacting with each other to get the most out of those connections? Cause it, right. to me, that combination, that's the winning combination right there. It's winning. Yeah. And that's why we're winning. We're winning the game. You know, that's why you have, we have over 90, uh, amazing, uh, co-authors that are number one bestsellers with all of our, all of our stuff now. That's why they're, they're growing to the next level. So it's amazing. 
If yeah, it's amazing. Join a mastermind. I'm loving it. I'm really loving it. I'm hoping that the listeners have taken something from this as well. Before we let you go, we got to get a little bit more information. Now we've got two really key pieces of information. We've got the website decide to be awesome.com. We've also got the gift set right along guestpass.com. But if somebody wants to find out more about Eric, Mr. Awesome Swanson, how do they find out more about you? Yeah. So here, I'll put it in the, in the chat. You can just go to, uh, uh, let me, you guys will laugh at this. Um, there we go. Did I spell it right? It's hard to spell when the books are way up here. So there we go. <laughs> All right. There we go. All right. Read that. What's that? Say? Not TonyRobbins.com. <laughs> no, great. Just go to NotTonyRobbins.com. You'll go directly to me. It's a lot of fun. Um, here's, here's one of our, our websites. I love Speak, that. com. That goes directly to us. Um, and, and decide to be awesome.com. That's the one to go to. You've got lots of cool gifts in there. You can join our, our, our number one best selling campaign that's, um, that's based on Dale Carnegie's work, um, from the 1900s. It's amazing. And it's, it's, it's how to win friends and influence people. And, um, and it's awesome. You know, join us there. There's a, there's a link there to, to join us if you want. We're only taking 33 people to pay to play to come into the book series. And it's, uh, it's, it's amazing. Amazing. Really so I, there you, you know, I, I, I feel remiss too. I was going to ask about the Dale Carnegie. Uh, connection earlier because I love Dale Carnegie. I think that was just one of my earliest influences was how was friends con- and influence people. Yeah, um, that's the connection. But- that's it. We we decided. Look, who out there is leading the field in in helping people in the world? And we thought Napoleon Hill. Think and grow mm-hmm. rich. So we we based thirteen. So we have a thirteen steps to riches. There are thirteen books. This one's volume six. So we have wow. every two every two months we have a new book, three hundred page book coming out um, that wow. is based on Napoleon Hill's work right there. Yeah. I think we'll go rich, and then mm-hmm. we also have uh, the um, the book of David and Goliath, which I think I put it back. Yeah, it's back here, mm-hmm. and right. uh, and that's a three book process, and that's on this this modern day uh, focus of of being the David to your Goliath of obstacles. And then we have the third book series, which is just launching. Uh, it, it, we're selling out over the next seven or eight days. So if, you, if you're watching this or listening to this, go to Decide to Be Awesome. Click on the, the top link, I think it is, which says, let me see if I find it on my, on my, yeah, it's right here. So if you see it, it'll say, join our newest number one bestselling uh, series, The Book of Influence. And that's based on the work from Dale Carnegie. And it's a four book process. You'll be a not, not one, not two, not three. You'll be a four time number one bestseller, number one bestseller with us and come to Barnes and Noble and do book signings and, and meet the celebrities wow. that are involved in it. And guys, it's only, if you click on that link, I think you'll get a, a discount. Um, it's normally $12,000 for the whole book series. Oh yeah. You get basically you get 50% off if you go through this. So it's $6,000 to join us. It's really, really worth it. Yeah. So there you go. I'm loving That's this. Hey, this has been a great visit from Mr. Awesome. I, I, first of all, I want to thank you for taking the time to join us and tell us about all these wonderful things you've, you've picked up over the years. I also want to thank you for the work that you have been doing all this time because that's important. You did. And, and yeah, listeners couldn't actually see that. But yeah, that's, that's exactly what he was doing. But seriously, I, the, the kind of work that you're doing is, is valuable, not just to the people who hear you on stage or read your book. You're, you're reaching out to people in ways that, you know, obviously social media and the internet are making that possible, but you're reaching out and you're giving a message that's really, really important. And I want to thank you on behalf of the people who are receiving that message in the other ways. So thank you. For oh, what you're thank doing. you. Yeah. My pleasure, man. I appreciate it. And we took the full hour. I love it. What's we up? did. We did. It was a great thing. So thank you very much. Sam, we, we, we kind of like talked over you there, but, uh, you know, <laughs> we, we heard the piano. That was the most important. Part. Sam had his solo. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I, it was all, I, I he was excellent. All you right. guys are awesome. I really appreciate the two of you. Keep doing a kick ass job and, uh, keep changing the world. Thank you. We will do exactly that. And, and thank you also to our podcast listeners everywhere, because quite honestly, guys, not only would we not have a podcast without you, but you give us the energy. So thank you very much for being listeners. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Rock and roll. <laughs>